let's take a look at vectors and vector addition. So remember, there are scalars and there are vectors. Scalars are quantities which only have magnitude, and vectors are quantities which have magnitude and direction. So we've seen a number of vectors already. Vectors include displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, and we'll see other vectors later on, like momentum, electric field, magnetic field. We're going to start representing vectors as arrows. And the reason for this is that with an arrow, you can represent the magnitude of the vector by its length. So the length of the arrow will represent the magnitude. The direction of the arrow will represent the direction of the vector. Simple as that. So let's take a look at a little example. Let's say I have an object and it experiences two forces. Five newtons to the right and seven newtons to the left. And let's call those F1 and F2. So let's say I want to add together F1 and F2. Normally when I ask someone to add the two vectors together, there's two responses that I hear. One is that the sum of F1 and F2 is 12 newtons. And one is that it's 2 newtons. Well, the correct answer comes from thinking about these as vectors. If we think about these as vectors, F1 is to the right, F2 is to the left. So when we've looked at vectors in the past, we take into account their direction by thinking about things as positive or negative. So let's choose a direction to be positive. Let's choose right to be positive and left to be negative. If we do that, then F1 plus F2 is equal to plus 5 newtons plus negative 7 newtons. And if we add those together, then I get negative 2 newtons. And that negative sign, remember, that negative sign means to the left. So we end up with 2 newtons to the left. That is what we get when we add 5 newtons to the right plus 7 newtons to the left. Okay. Let's look at a separate example. Let's say I have 7 newtons up plus 5 newtons up. If I add those together, well, it's going to be 12 newtons up. But let's just make sure, let's go through the motions, F1 plus F2, let's choose a direction to be positive, make up positive and down negative. So I have plus 7 newtons plus 5 newtons, so that's 12 newtons. And I got a positive number in the end, so that's 12 newtons upward. So that's a great way to add vectors together when they're all along the same dimension. But what if they're not? What if they're in two dimensions? How do you do it there? Well, before we get to that, let's take a look at vectors just from a graphical perspective rather than an algebraic perspective. In other words, let's draw pictures of vectors being added instead of worrying about numbers for the moment. And to do this, we're going to use something called the tip-to-tail method, also called the head-to-toe method. And to do this, you first draw the first vector. Next, you draw the second vector with its tail starting at the tip of the first vector. And you got to be careful about this. Don't change the direction of either vector. Just draw the second vector with its tail starting at the first vector's tip. And if you have more vectors, then you keep going like that. You just keep adding the vectors to the previous vector's tip. And once you've done that, the total vector, the sum, which is also called the resultant vector, goes from the very start of your chain of vectors to the very end of your chain of vectors. In other words, it goes from the first tail to the last tip. So let's try this out with two one-dimensional vectors. Let's say I have vector 1 and vector 2. I draw them tail to tip. The sum of them goes from the first tail to the last tip. So it just looks like that. Now let's try two vectors that are in opposite directions. Let's say there's a big vector to the right and a small vector to the left. If I draw them tip to tail, then the resultant vector goes from the first tail to the last tip. All right. And let's say I have two vectors that are the same size. So I'll draw them tip to tail, or head to toe, or whatever you want to call it. And the resultant goes from the first tail to the last head. All right. So in this case, first tail and last tip are in the same place, so the resultant vector is zero. They all add up to zero. Okay, one reason why this is so useful is it leads us to a method for adding vectors which are not in the same dimension. So let's say I have a vector pointing to the right and a vector pointing downward. If I want to add those two together, well, I'll draw them tip to tail 
and the resultant vector goes from the first tail to the last tip. There's the resultant vector. And this works no matter what. If I have a vector to the left and then upward, then the resultant vector goes from the first tail to the last tip. Now, one of the most common mistakes that I see being made in graphical addition is people want the vectors to go in a big cycle, and they don't. So be very careful with that. The resultant vector doesn't make everything go in a big cycle. It goes from the first tail to the last tip. All right. If you look at this graphical addition of vectors method, one of the reasons why it's so useful is that if the vectors are perpendicular to each other, you get a big triangle. You get a big right triangle. So you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the resultant vector. So let's say I have three newtons to the west plus four newtons to the north. So first I'll draw the diagram. There we go, drawn tip to tail. There's the resultant vector. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the resultant vector. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 3 newtons squared plus 4 newtons squared equals c squared. c is equal to 5 newtons. Now the only real tricky part is the direction of that resultant vector, which we have to give because force is a vector and so you need to give a direction with it. And I guess I could say it's that way, point, but we need a better way to do it. And a better way to do it would be with an angle. So what we'll do is we'll find an angle at the base of the vector. And the way that I've drawn my triangle, I have an angle right here. I'll solve for that angle, and with the diagram, those two things together will specify the direction of my vector. To find this angle, I can use tangent. Because the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And if you don't remember that, go back to Sokotoa, um, and you'll remember your sine, your cosine, your tangent. Tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side of the triangle divided by the adjacent side of the triangle. And then we do a little bit of algebra. You've got to take the inverse tangent of both sides. So the angle is equal to the inverse tangent of 4 newtons divided by 3 newtons. And that's equal to 53.1 degrees. Let's look at another example. Let's say I have two vectors that I want to add together. I want to add together 8 newtons east plus 3 newtons south. So I'll draw them tip to tail. First thing to do. I'll draw in the resultant going from the first tail to the last tip and it creates a right triangle so I can use the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared and if I do that the magnitude of the resultant vector is 8.54 newtons. Now I want to indicate the direction using an angle so I'll use the angle there at the base of my resultant vector and if I find that angle well let's see the tangent of that angle is equal to 3 newtons divided by 8 newtons. So if I solve for theta, theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 3 newtons divided by 8 newtons, which is equal to 20.6 degrees. Now as a last example, let's look at a situation where you add four vectors together. Let's say you have 10 newtons up plus 16 newtons down plus 20 newtons to the left plus 12 newtons to the right. So that seems a little daunting. If you were to draw all that together, that's a lot of arrows. One way to make it easier on yourself is you can add all of the up and down vectors first, and then all of the left and right vectors, and then combine those two. So I'll show you what I mean. First, let's add together the 10 newtons up plus 16 newtons down. If I just add those two together, well, let's see, 10 newtons up plus 16 newtons down, I get 6 newtons down. And then if I take just the ones that are left and right, well, 20 newtons left plus 12 newtons right, I get 8 newtons to the left. So really what I'm saying is I'm adding 6 newtons down plus 8 newtons to the left. And that's not so bad, because then I can just draw a single triangle. I got 6 newtons down, I got 8 newtons to the left. Let's see, then I do the Pythagorean theorem. And I get 10 newtons. And if I solve for the angle, well, if I've drawn it this way, then that angle right there is 53.1 degrees. 